church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. Here's all the people. So speaking of the future, where do we think God by His grace might lead us as a church? Well, at this point, I just have one picture for you. This is a pretty good ship. Thanks to the hard work I've just mentioned, the people here and the guys who've labored for 40 years past. In fact, this is a great ship. What I think we need to do is to lift the sail and allow God to blow and send us. That's my prayer. And I think that in a little while, we're all going to have to hold on real tight. So Rosebank, let's lift the sail together. Amen. Fellow South Africans, I'm addressing you this evening on a matter of great national importance. We have now declared a national state of disaster in terms of the Disaster Management Act. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. Where's all the people? The time is coming, and in fact has come, when you'll be scattered, each to your own home. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so the hope is that Rosebank Union Church will continue together for worship on Sunday, but just not on these premises. We're going to have church. It's going to be Rosebank Union style, Rosebank Union led church, but it's church that's going to be happening in your homes. As a church, it's so good to be with you, even though from a little bit of a distance. Well, I've been so excited to share this series with you. I certainly never imagined that it would be um, via video. So I've got to be honest, it is a little bit weird. I'm thankful there's some staff members here. Uh, thank you guys. You're going to have to like, your amens will have to be the amens of like hundreds. The National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown for 21 days with effect from midnight on Thursday, the 26th of March. May God protect our people. Ngosi Sigelela i Africa. God CN said Africa. God, do bless South Africa. I thank you. Well, this morning we all woke up to the reality of a completely new way of living. As I was listening to the president's speech last night, I was deeply moved by the concern for human life, for our fellow citizens, for our economy, and also to the call to prayer. And we, just like everyone else, have now been figuring out just how to go on living in this new reality. So this week, our focus and our call to action is to prayer. When I started at Rosebank Union, I knew that really what we, all we needed to do was to live I also knew that prayer would be a vital part of filling those sails. Well, what I didn't know is that the pandemic would catapult us as a church into praying together in ways that I could never have imagined. So we started praying together from week one because of the pandemic. It started out with these kind of awkward prayer meetings on Facebook Live. Awkward for me as I was the only one really speaking out loud and praying, but many of you gathered and praying alongside us for our church. That happened weekly uh, for a couple of months. And then we moved to our Zoom prayer meetings, which was phenomenal for me, even from another viewpoint. And that was that I got to meet people in breakout rooms and actually spend time getting to know some of the members of Rosebank. And those prayer meetings have become a feature of our church now and always will be monthly gatherings to pray together for each other and for the church. Hey, Rosebank. Well, I'm here 
in my wife's art studio, which is now a film studio, recording a sermon. I've got to tell you that uh, this was not in preaching class. In early May 2020, we had an idea. What if instead of recording for church on the stage, we recorded it in a studio here at church? And with that, we started flipping the music room here at the church into our very own Rosebank Union studio. It started off by moving all our tech that ran a Sunday into this room so we could record video church services and also stream church. And slowly over the months through your faithfulness church, we've been able to grow in uh, what we are able to bring to you. So much so that right now we are able to stream what happens on the stage and keep our studio. And so we just wanna say thank you to you, the church family, and give glory to God for what He has allowed us to do right here, bringing Sunday service church to many people around the world. At the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, I transitioned from the children's ministry assistant to the Sunday services director role. Um, and that was Brett's previously. And so a great celebration or a team win for us is um, being able to split the studio so that we can have live preaching and live worship at the same time in the studio. Another great team win was having our shepherding elders as online hosts um, on our Go Live platform. And then looking to the future uh, with the hybrid service, we're able um, to welcome people into the service as well as uh, stream our services live for our church family joining on Go Live. Hey, good morning, church. Man, I'm so excited to be here. So I am in the studio and uh, it is Sunday. I'm just so excited to be here, to be doing this, to know that um, kind of outside there in hundreds of homes around Joburg that, that you're listening as we gather together and study God's Word together. standing in the auditorium of our church which has stood empty for most of this year due to just this hectic season of COVID but I want to thank you for joining us online and I want to thank particularly Brett France and Michael Phillip and Jonathan Crosley who are part of the worship ministry and part of the online ministry and getting the studio up and running um, so that you could join us in worship each week. It's been a great blessing. We've managed to record 42 songs as a worship ministry, and we've been through many different transitions. We've had to figure out copyright and licensing and streaming licenses, but God has been good to us. And you've watched the worship evolve over the, the past year. And so I'm just so grateful to God for using us. I'm so grateful to God for the team and enabling this to happen. And as the outgoing worship pastor, I'm just so grateful for all that God has done in this year, despite all that we've been through. Um, I'm really just so grateful for particularly Easter and the carol service. Easter was viewed by 2,500 people. The carol service was this little window that the president gave us together. Two services of 250 and it was just a breath of fresh air as we worshiped Christ. May He continue to be glorified in our midst. After six years in the youth ministry, I was really excited to receive the news that I'd be taking over from Justin Tamlin as worship pastor at Rosebank Union Church. I'm really looking forward to this new role and I'm looking forward to be able to shape the worship culture here at Rosebank Union. everyone, my name is Ansune, if you haven't met me yet, and this over here is Candice. Hi everyone. <laughs> and we're coming to you live from Rosebank Union Church. 
As challenging as moving to online ministry was, it also opened up the opportunity for new ways to be creative and to tell stories of the Bible in a way that already engaged kids. One thing I can think about is tracking with the sermon series through the book of Ezra. And at first I thought, how on earth will we do this? But with fun animations and voiceovers, we really could let the story of Ezra come alive. Another thing was the opportunity to include kids and volunteers from their homes in our online videos. And they could just simply record themselves and send that through to us and be a part of our service. We really struggled to create videos that could target kids from the age of two till 13, such a wide age range. But thankfully, Isabella Sneeman started creating Bible story videos with Rosie and kindly let us use her videos as a part of our service. Isabella and Rosie, we are so thankful for your service during lockdown. One of the many things that were highlighted by the lockdown uh, for families and for me as a dad was how do I disciple my children? And so to solve that problem, um, myself and the kids ministry uh, partnered uh, to form what we call Raising Parents podcast, which is a podcast that deals with family discipleship. This podcast seeks to, um, to align ourselves as we seek to disciple our kids in our homes. And we discuss uh, so many different topics just centered around family discipleship as we take what the Lord has said to us seriously. During the COVID crisis, we really had to adapt as a youth ministry and adapt we did. We started out with meeting together on Friday nights over Zoom. Eventually, we started including some fun elements on social media, like Monday Madness. And then we started putting together some great content, like Tuesday Truths. You can imagine what a relief it was for us when we could finally gather together again at the end of the year. And this culminated in our end of year youth formal. We thank God for His faithfulness in this season. In January 2021, I took over the youth ministry from Dave Myberg, and the highlights that we've seen so far was just being able to gather in person. It's been such a blessing to have the youth gather on a Friday night again. Just really looking forward to what God is going to be doing in the coming months um, and for this year. Last year saw us start what we call the lead table, which is leadership equipping and discipleship around the table. This is a space to equip our community group leaders. And this was a major highlight uh, from 2020. And we are carrying that on into 2021. It is such a great space for all the leaders to come together, have fellowship with one another, and also talk about the things that are happening in their groups while getting equipped to lead their people well. June last year, we thought that it would be helpful to start a, a webinar where we would address particular challenges related to the pandemic in people's lives uh, and how to live faithfully as a Christian amidst those challenges, in, uh, perhaps in ways that couldn't be addressed from the pulpit. So we started the first Monday's uh, webinar, particularly to help in the pandemic and uh, so we had a range of speakers helping us navigate topics like anxiety, navigating leadership amidst change and well just once again it's something that I think we have seen bear much fruit and have loved doing and will continue to do as we have just speakers come address us on issues of how to live faithfully as a Christian uh, in the particular challenging times that we live in and looking forward to many more of these first Monday's webinars. was a year with a difference in the history of care and counseling at RUC. Counseling went online and with this we were actually able to counsel people in all provinces of South Africa. We moved international as well. We had people from Asia, from Europe and some people from the African countries. And really interesting to note that some of the people we counseled were actually ex-members of RUC. 
We also set ourselves to do a task of calling about 1,700 adults on the database. So the care team and a team of volunteers called these people just to let them know that we're here and if anything, if they need anything, they can just give us a call and just to check up on them as well. And we also ran our usual support groups and these were actually run online using Zoom. We ran premarital, grief share, and Alzheimer's, and we did have a very good attendance to those. And last but not least, James, one of our care team members, was available throughout the year for Park Care and Rosehaven residents and staff in order to debrief them or just to go and be with them, you know, if they needed pastoral care. So all in all, I can say that 2020 was a challenging but very interesting year for us and we saw the hand of God at work in our team members and in the lives of the people that we walked with. So what happens when God plants foreign nationals right at the doorstep of our church? Well, the choices can be, we can lay a complaint about them, or we can be indifferent or look the other way, or we can seek to do what Christ would do, that is to offer love and compassion. As a church community, we have an opportunity to minister to who we call our neighbors here. What sort of things have we done this past year? Well, we have offered church services and Bible studies. We have shared the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has the power to transform lives. We have clothed them during winter, providing blankets and during the months, the early months of the lockdown, they were part of those who were sheltered here at the church uh, uh, in partnership with the Fountain for the Thirsty uh, during the lockdowns. I believe this is what the gospel is all about and what the church can do, especially a church that is based in the city, to look for the interest of others and to minister the good news of Jesus Christ. What an incredible year uh, 2020 has been for our, for our community in Alex. It, it was not supposed to survive uh, the lockdown. It was not really supposed to survive the pandemic. The spaces between people would not allow social distancing. The density of the population would not allow that. Uh, people did not have the basic things to protect themselves from the pandemic and yet we saw God use us as a church in incredible ways. Uh, he used us like He did uh, with Joseph in Egypt for the saving of many lives. And it was amazing just to see how, um, uh, just like in the first century, when Christians uh, used to go in the opposite direction to those who were fleeing plagues, we saw God uh, uh, taking us right to where people were hurting, right to where people were, uh, were, were, were vulnerable and we were able to, uh, to serve them. Uh, the most amazing thing is that we had focused on 1,000 families. That was our aim right at the beginning. But by the end of the hard lockdown, we had fed over 73,000 people. Over 200 volunteers joined us from Alex as well as Sentin, many of whom were really risking their lives uh, in order to serve those who were most vulnerable this time. Uh, we had uh, mothers and, and, people, and young people sewing masks, and so over 10,000 masks were sewn and, um, and made available to the community of Alex. We had over 4,000 gospel tracks that we put in each and every parcel so that those who uh, were ex having access to the food would also be encouraged by the Word of God. We just want to thank the congregation and the church for the amazing platform that it has been for us to be able to serve our neighbors in Alex. And I thank you for the prayers that you, uh, you, you prayed uh, for us. Thank you for the support the messages of encouragement. Thank you for sharing the posts that we shared with uh, many uh, in, uh, in the community. Thank you for, for talking to your, uh, to your contacts, to your families, to your colleagues about the work that we do, that we were doing. We received thousands 
uh, upon thousands of donations. And so uh, we thank God. The gospel is never locked down. In the year 2020, when many people were on lockdown, we managed to reach out to Muslims and we made about 10 outreaches the whole year and we won many Muslims to the Lord Jesus Christ. The highlight for us, for the ministry in 2020 here in France, was the start of the Turkish Bible School, the Barnabas Bible School, where around 45 believers from three different countries are tuning in once a week on Zoom to receive good, solid Bible training and teaching. Another highlight, seven new believers were baptized. God and is good. God is at work and yes, we are so privileged to be part of this in France. Highlights for me this past year have been that I have been able to continue to support missionary families and their amazing work even though I had to teach their children online. I've conquered technology platforms I never thought I was capable of doing. I've connected with my sending cell on a much deeper level and I've been able to, to participate in the Rosebank Union services and feel part of the family, REC family, from so far away. A highlight for me of 2020 was the incredible opportunities we had to take food parcels and run soup kitchens in communities here in South Africa. And our church, church planters found men and women who normally would never listen to the gospel so open and so happy and so blessed uh, by these small acts of love by us and the incredible fruit that has come uh, from those encounters. The highlight of this year was one lady from the church after hearing a message um, on John 4, Samaritan woman at the well, she wrote us a long email saying that she knew this life that was like springs of living water, but she doesn't have it now. We talked for a while with her and God changed her. Tra transformation got made in her became a tremendous encouragement and a blessing for us and for the whole church here. God bless you. A highlight for me during 2020 in my work with Operation Mobilization has been my active involvement in the development and implementation of improved international financial policies, reporting standards and financial practices across the worldwide organization. A real privilege. Work that may to some seem far removed from missions, but work that is vital to increasing the effectiveness of this wonderful world. It's a special year. Despite all the challenges that went with it, uh, we saw as a small church plant that the numbers of people coming to church increased from 30s to 40s. We saw our little church grow. And again, in 2020, we saw commitment levels of people uh, getting heightened. We saw people so much committed to God's service. Uh, that was profound and encouraging. Highlight of 2020 was during the peak of the pandemic, there were heavily travel restrictions and many countries closed their borders. But against all the odds, Lord opened doors for me to travel back to Turkey and start ministering among my parents and relatives. A highlight for 2020 has been my inauguration as the Executive Director of Wycliffe Global Alliance. Together with my leadership team, over 100 alliance organizations and our partners worldwide, we are excited to see the continued growth within the Bible translation movement. God is very good to us and it is so good to see lives transformed. Good day, Rosebank Union family. My privilege to share with you today God's faithfulness over the aquatic center here at Faith Academy. We've been able to keep the pool open so the families of the school, staff members and students are able to swim for one hour daily and we are able to provide work for Ricky and Alex, both the lifeguards, because no one in the families are working 
and most of all for Ricky after many years to come to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Thank you. Bye. The highlight of 2020 was shifting from equipping 100 to 120 church planters to the virtual world where we were able to train and equip 3,000 of our church planters from around the world. We were able to facilitate conversations between those in open countries and closed countries and those working in easy and hard mission fields. I was privileged to be the conference director for this global gathering we call Bold Moves. One of our highlights from 2020 was sending Justine and Keegan Brady to the mission field in Thailand. They went out as short-termers in 2019 and during that time there discerned God's calling to full-time missions and so they went out at the beginning of last year and uh, they managed to get there just before COVID, just before lockdown happened in Thailand. So that really is our highlight for 2020. For four years we've been working in the streets with the women in anti-human trafficking. Last year during lockdown we were able to provide fast food parcels for the ladies. The ladies were so open to us, they allow us to come into their homes to bring the food to them. They allowed us, they gave us their contact number. They are still in contact with us. That it has been my highlight for the year. Some highlights of the past year is seeing trust built in communities where there was no trust and good news being shared. We're being able to treat children with cerebral palsy and build relationships with their mums. Um, doing COVID relief distributions and just seeing the relationships that were built through that. What are the other things you guys are thankful for this year? Snow. School. Friends. Pets. Rosie! My highlight for 2020 has been God's incredible faithfulness and provision, providing me with financial support that I needed to raise in order to go out into the mission field, providing me with a place to stay during this time of limbo while I wait for the borders to open, a car to drive, uh, just incredible provision from God and seeing God using the people of Rosebank Union Church, uh, stepping out in faithfulness and obedience as God calls them to partner with me. It's been an incredible blessing and I thank God for that. There were two major milestones in our development as a church last year, uh, which oriented around the two major general meetings that we had. The first one in September, which was supposed to be our March annual general meeting, postponed, where we got to uh, implement a brand new staff structure, so a comprehensive restructure of our staff, uh, which was so exciting to do, releasing people in the area of their giftedness to serve in our church. And then in November, we had our a general meeting uh, electing new leaders but more than just electing new leaders we voted as a church to drastically change our church rules and our constitution all around a structure review process that had been happening for about a year and so that was a major milestone in Rosebank Union's history changing our structure again to help mobilize Rosebank to be more effective in its mission in Joburg. 